Well, hey, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here in the Michaels Community Classroom on another Monday night. Um, let's paint with plaid. And it is my pleasure to uh, introduce to you this evening, uh, Chris Williams, who is going to be teaching the class. Chris has not done many of these Monday night classes with you. So it's sort of a new person that you get to um, have a class with, but she is a, a beautiful artist, a, um, very talented and does has been uh, a key member of the Let's Paint team here at Plaid for, for many years. So we're excited to have her. And she is going to be teaching tonight a painting called A Pumpkin to Crow About. So um, we're pretty excited to get started. Um, as Jimena mentioned, of course, everything is being recorded. So if you feel like the pace is going a little bit fast for you, or you'd rather just um, stop and watch and then go back and paint at your own pace, you can do that by, as she mentioned, checking out the class on Michael's class um, community classroom website or also on Michael's YouTube channel. So without further ado, I will pass it over to Chris. Well, thank you, John, and thank you, Humana. Uh, as John said, I'm Chris Williams, and I have been a teacher since I was a teenager, and we all know that was just a couple years ago, right? Clearly. <laughs> and I know I can't fool any of you, <laughs> but I've been teaching for a long time, been a painter for many, many years as well, and my uh, John is right. I have not taught a Monday evening class. I have taught uh, a daytime Monday class but I've been a teacher for many, many years, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. So let's just jump right into our project, okay? A pumpkin to crow about. This is all painted on an eight by 10 stretched canvas. I hope you all have your canvases and your paint supplies ready nearby. Excuse me, nearby. Also on the Michaels class where your supply list was, you will find that there was a pattern sheet. And John, if you don't mind, yep. just move the fan because it's kind of blown a little bit. Sorry about that, thank you. Uh, there was a pattern to download that you can, uh, let me show you, you can cut it apart, tape it together and use the pattern to transfer onto your stretched canvas. Many folks have told me that they've already uh, got their canvas together with the pattern on, but I'd like to take a moment real quickly to tell you how to put your pattern on if you have not yet done so. Uh, when we have more time, sometimes what we do is we actually trace the pattern onto tracing paper first and then use that to position over on, um, we can probably go overhead now, there we go. You, you can then use this to position on top of your canvas so that you can kind of see through the tracing paper pattern. If you haven't done that yet before and you are working with the printed pattern, simply lay that on top of your canvas. It might be slightly larger. And so you can either line up one corner here of the pumpkin and be a little bit short on the top. Or if you want more um, checkerboard, line up in the bottom right hand corner and then lose a little bit of your pumpkin. Because unfortunately, this measure is just a little bit larger than eight and a half by or eight by 10. Once you have your pattern in place where you want, you can use a product that is an artist transfer paper. This is graphite paper. It is well used, well worn, and I've used it many, many times. This has a matte side and it has a shiny side. When you transfer a pattern, you're always going to want to put the shiny side down onto your canvas and put it completely underneath the whole pattern. Once you have it in place, then you can use a ballpoint pen or an artist tool called a stylist, and you will then trace over each of these main pattern lines. Once you have traced over all of the pattern lines, your pattern is now on the stretch canvas, and I'm bringing it up so you can see. It's very light, but it's still faint. It's faint, but it's enough that I can still see my pattern. So I'm gonna give you all just another minute or two if you haven't traced and transferred your pattern or applied your pattern to your canvas. If you need to do that real quickly, I'm gonna give you just a few minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and start talking about our project though while you are applying the pattern to your canvas. The products that we're gonna work with tonight are the folk art multi-surface paints. And we're gonna start with the color Pueblo. Multi-surface, when you see that on the label, that means just what it says. This paint can be used on wood, on glass, on tin, on terracotta, on fabric, on canvas like we're doing today. This paint is so rich and creamy in consistency 
and it can be used on a multitude of surfaces. And I like this paint, not only is it rich and creamy in consistency, but this is a non-toxic water-based paint. So it cleans out really well out of your brushes. The colors intermix and blend well together. And it's just a beautiful paint to work with. Um, this is just one of the formulas of paint that folk art manufactures. But tonight we're gonna go ahead and play around with a little bit of the um, multi-surface colors. And I'm going to go ahead and squeeze out onto my palette. So if you are painting along with me, I know many people say they don't like to paint during our paint nights, that they rather watch the class and then paint once the um, class is then shown later on YouTube. If you wanna paint along with me tonight, go ahead and squeeze yourself out a good dollop of Pueblo. Pueblo is such a beautiful color. It looks like a terracotta uh, pot to me. It's a good terracotta-like color. What we're going to paint first is our pumpkin. Once we paint the pumpkin, we're gonna then paint the background and then we'll paint the stem, the bird. And then if you choose to put checkerboard on yours, we're gonna paint the checkerboard last. And the reason why I'm telling you we're gonna paint the pumpkin first, rather than painting the whole entire background, then tracing and transferring the shape of the pattern uh, is because of our time limit that we have tonight. We have just about an hour to be together. So I'm going to paint areas separately. If you wanted to do this again a second time, you might want to do a whole entire background. When I get to teach in the background technique, you can do the whole top surface of your canvas with this background technique. Allow that to completely dry, then transfer the shape of your pumpkin, stem, and little bird, and paint those on top of the full entire background. But again, for tonight and time's sake tonight, we're going to paint just each section separately. And the colors that I chose tend to be more of a primitive. Um, the checkerboard kind of makes it more country and primitive. Our bird is definitely a primitive little bird. And the color of the pumpkin is not that bright, rich, yellow, orange. This is all done with this Pueblo, this terracotta-like color. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a large brush. This is a three quarter inch flat brush. Stroke into the puddle of the Pueblo filling both sides of the brush nice and full with this color. And as you stroke into that paint, you are noticing immediately how nice and rich and creamy and consistency this paint is. We're gonna paint each of these sections like a full solid base coat. So if you're painting along with me, go ahead and paint each of the sections of your pumpkin, <clears throat> this beautiful Pueblo color. And for now, I'm gonna tell you, don't worry about bringing the pattern over onto the edge because we're gonna do a different treatment on the edge at the end. So if you want, just go ahead and paint pretty much just the top side of your canvas. And if you can try and use long, smooth strokes. We're gonna so, allow this, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Chris, so a couple of people don't have Pueblo, but what could, how could they sort of mix up something that would be, would be good? Okay, if you don't have Pueblo, a good color might be to start with a pure orange, a real bright orange, and then add a little brown to it. I don't know what browns you have, but if you have the brown that we're using tonight, go ahead and use that. Just add a little bit of that, that because you want to deepen or darken that color a little bit. I hope that makes sense to y'all. Yeah, sure. That sort of like a, looks almost like a rust color from here, but... Um... Yeah, an orangey brown. I think it's not super critical. Everyone's pumpkin can be a slightly different shade. That'll be oh, fine. Of course, of course. Mine just, I happen to choose mine to be a little bit more um, of a primitive pumpkin, a primitive color palette for tonight. I want to point out as I painted the second section here, if y'all want to look for just a moment, I left just a little sliver of difference there so that I can still see uh, the different sections of my pumpkin. And as you continue to paint your pumpkins, you'll want to do the same thing with each little section. Leave yourself a little uh, like guideline, if you will. And if it helps, pick up your piece and hold it so that you can see it and work with it. There's not um, anything that says you cannot move your artwork. Make it comfortable so that you can see as you are pulling your paint down each little section of the pumpkin. And John is right. If you all have any questions, we're here to help you tonight. So be sure and ask your questions. John will 
relay your comments or questions to me if you have any. Mm -hmm. Somebody was just suggesting that they use burnt sienna, which looks probably good too. So great. Love it. I can't wait to see everyone's pumpkins. Those of you that are painting along with me tonight, remember to use those hashtags and we welcome you to actually post your, your painting in the Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook groups so that all of us here at Plaid can see them. Yeah, I will definitely, when we have a break or when people have are trying to catch up, I'll, I'll put some stuff in here about the, uh, the Let's Paint with Plaid group. I'll post uh, a link to it and give you guys some more information about that. That's awesome, you know, everybody John, thank is, you. Everyone is feverishly painting their pumpkin at the moment and don't have time to be paying attention to my <laughs> nonsense. So we'll do that later. Oh, that's all right. Well, I um, wanna also point out too, the reason I told you I'm using a three quarter inch flat brush, you will notice that the larger the brush you have, the quicker it is to base coat your areas. So. If you are working with a very small little brush now, it might take you a little bit longer to get this area of the pumpkin covered. So keep that in mind when you're choosing your brush sizes moving forward. And on mine, I still have a little bit of a, a little section here down at the bottom. That's part of this section coming over off the edge. How's everybody doing? Does everyone? have their colors on their palette and working on base coating in their pumpkin. I sure hope so. So. I'll give you just another minute to get that part on. And then what we'll do is we're gonna let this dry before we come in with our shading. So we can start working on the base coat of the background areas. And that's a real fun technique that we call slip slap. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but I'm gonna show you a good way to do a slip slap technique. And I think you're gonna love it and you will use it and introduce it in lots of different paintings that you do in the future. Let's see, how y'all doing? Is everyone ready? Yeah. Well, um, some people were just asking again about the, I guess some folks don't have the tracing paper, so. Um... Well, you know, what I might suggest is if you didn't get the pattern, the best thing to do is just is hang tight and enjoy the class tonight. Use the comments to ask questions and interact with us. And when you get a moment after class, go back to the Michaels website. The pattern is still there on the supply list and you can download that pattern and print it off from your own printer and you know, perhaps paint this tomorrow or go. over the upcoming weekend. So as far as the colors go, she's just used the Pueblo so far to fill in the, uh, to fill in the pumpkin. And then what, what are the two colors you put out on your palette or did you not yes, even say? Yes, I was that? just, yeah, I didn't tell okay. him that, that, yet, that, John, I was just waiting until they were at this point, but let's go ahead and move on. So to my palette here, this brighter yellow is moon yellow. And that's what I added a pretty good sized dollop of that. And the darker yellow color over here is more like a golden yellow. This is called yellow ochre. So if you have both of those two colors, you're gonna add uh, kind of a sunny yellow, which is called moon yellow, and a golden yellow, which is called yellow ochre to your palette. And those two colors with a little bit of Pueblo is what we're gonna use for our background here. Now we're gonna use a technique that I call slip slap. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna load that brush with paint and I'm still using my, my large three quarter inch flat brush. And I'm gonna load the brush so that a portion of the brush, if you wanna think about it this way, like the left side of the brush is gonna have the dark yellow gold, the yellow ochre, and the right side of the brush is gonna have the moon yellow. There's gonna be two colors on the brush at one time and you can stroke up into one of the puddles and then stroke up into the other puddle, or some people like to dip and you can turn the corner or turn the brush straight up and down, dip one corner, dip the other corner, and then come to the uh, a clean spot on your palette. And what you're doing is just kind of blending those colors together so that you can see, I have a brush that's got both colors in the flat of the brush. So I've got yellow ochre, moon yellow, 
So I've got the golden yellow and the sunny yellow all in the brush at the same time. And we're gonna do a technique that we call slip slap. And so slip slap is simply when I go to the canvas, I'll just do it right on the canvas rather than my palette here. I'm going to slip and slap, slip and slap and slightly overlap. Don't go over one area too long because you want the colors to kind of look like they're modeled. You do not want it to look like it's overly blended. And can you see, I'm bringing this up closer to the camera, how it looks like the colors are modeled. You don't want, and I don't mind seeing brush strokes. You don't want it to look like there's a lot of um, brush strokey look. You don't want it to look like it's overly blended and you don't want it to look like you're just seeing both colors. So I'm slipping and I'm slapping and I'm moving that brush around on my palette. For now, I'm gonna stay away from the pattern line of my bird and my um, little stem that I have there. I'm just gonna do the big areas first. Again, I'm using the moon yellow and the yellow ochre. This is such a fun technique. You have to be careful not to overly blend, but you do get a really rich modeled look. And once you have kind of like the basic shape all the way around, then come back and go up closely to the pumpkin or the pattern lines and you're not gonna be able to completely slip slap, but you can change the direction of the brush to then come up real close to those pattern lines or the pumpkin itself that you face coated. I hope this makes sense. Does anyone have any questions on slip slap? No, nope, I think we got it. Okay. Just be real careful when you come up to your pattern lines. And if by chance you got a little heavy handed or maybe perhaps a little nervous and you got too close to a pattern line and accidentally covered something up, you, let's say you covered up the bird's beak or his tail, no worries at all. We'll let the background dry and you can retrace that pattern line on there. It's not a problem. Remember when you go to reload your brush every so often that you reload the brush with the same side of the brush with each color. Our little, um, little twirly stem or vine for the pumpkin is just that. It's very twirly and you don't have to worry too much about like, let's say you covered up a little bit of that. Our it, and when you look at mine, you'll see when we get to that point, it's really kind of gnarly. So it's okay for it not to be completely smooth. I hope you all are enjoying this technique. If you, if yeah, this everyone, everyone's liking, everyone seems to be really liking this. Um, Good. This moves pretty quickly, especially with the smaller canvas and the larger brush. And there's a little loop in the center of our little stem here. So don't forget that little part. And when you get down to the bottom, there is a checkerboard down at the bottom. And when you look at the checkerboard, you're going to see that this background technique is covered behind it. So if you want, you can continue your slip slap down through the bottom, uh, right on top of that. If you've transferred your uh, checkerboard design, you should be able to still kind of see it through it a little bit. If by chance you can't see it once you've covered it, again, you can let this dry and come back and transfer your checkerboard after the background here of your slip slap is dry. If you get uh, paint covered over onto the edges, it's no worries because like I said, we're going to do a background technique on the edges different from what we've done on the top. And once you've got everything slip slapped, you can go ahead and um, if you're ready, I, you, I'm gonna show you up close here. On some of my areas, in this corner, in my upper left-hand corner, my upper right-hand corner, areas around my little uh, blackbird, my little crow, maybe under the underneath side of our stem, 
can you see that there's a, like a blush of color? It's more than just the two yellows that we've added. And we're going to pick up a little bit of Pueblo on this same brush. I haven't cleaned my brush and I'm gonna pick up the Pueblo on the darker yellow side, the yellow ochre side. I'm gonna just tip the corner of my brush into that Pueblo and stroke on the palette a little bit. And using that same kind of slip slap technique with a very light hand this time, not a lot of pressure. I'm gonna slip slap in just that blush of that Pueblo color. Can you all see that? I'm gonna bring this up close so you can see there's just a little bit of blush starting on this corner right here, my upper right hand corner. So if you like that blush look, that's your next step is to, again, it's the three quarter inch flat brush. I have not cleaned my brush. It's still got the two yellows in it. On the side of the brush that was the yellow ochre, the darker golden yellow color, I tipped into my Pueblo, blended on the palette, using that same motion of the slip slap. You add that wherever you wanna add a little bit of blush to that background color. And for me, I did it in the upper right-hand corner, the upper left-hand corner. I did put a little blush in the lower right-hand corner opposite of our pumpkin. And I also did it on the underneath side of my um, stem and a little bit around the bird. Just to give a little bit of a blush here and there. And I see a big section in the middle here of my bird that I did not get my two yellows in underneath my bird in between the vine. So I'll come back and add some of that color to distinguish the bird from the vine. Don't worry about his two little pencil lint, uh, thin little legs because we can always come back and add those. I will tell you, you may want to really make sure you blush well around the bird, especially near the beak because right now the beak is surrounded by lots of yellows and the beak itself is going to be the lightest yellow, the moon yellow. So you'll want to make sure that there's a background color difference. We wanna differentiate where this uh, beak is going to be. So go ahead and blush in around your bird and around that beak. So I'm applying some of that Pueblo on one side of the brush. Then I come back with the side of the brush that still has the yellow in it and use that to kind of soften that Pueblo color. Some folks were just saying how nice it, this would look on uh, like a piece of wood, Chris. I think they're right. Oh, most definitely, yes. This is a project that could be painted on many different types of surfaces. I agree with everyone, John. Yeah, particularly with the multi-surface paint and they're already ready to go. That's right, most definitely. Even think about with the multi-surface paints, not only does it work on so many different surfaces, the paint itself has a sealer built into it, which is a great thing because that means it can be used indoors as well as outdoors. So with fall coming around the corner, let's say you wanted to do this on a piece of wood and make a, a piece of garden art or a welcome sign for your front door. Uh, it's perfect because you don't have to use an outdoor sealer or varnish unless you want to for added ex extra protection. But this can be used indoors, outdoors. Uh, and it's, like I said, it's beautiful because it's water-based, non-toxic. It cleans up really, really well. And let's say I'm gonna take a side note while you all are painting and trying to catch up perhaps. This paint also can be used on glassware. So I'll tell you real quickly, if you were going to paint on glassware, let's say you wanted to paint a pumpkin on a piece of glass, you take your glass, fully clean your glass well in soap and water. Then what you want to do is you want to use a rubbing alcohol moistened paper towel and wipe over the surface. Always paint without using any san um, hand sanitizer on you, no hand lotions, your skin and oils need to be free too of any extra um, product. And then when you paint, paint directly on the glass, 
allow that glass item to completely dry, um, uh, we say at least overnight. Then you're gonna put that painted wine stem in a glass, I'm sorry, in an oven that is uh, then set to temperature of 350 degrees. Do not preheat your oven. It's a cold oven that you're putting that painted glassware in. And then allow it to bake for 30 minutes. 30 minutes later, you're gonna turn that oven off, but leave your glassware in the oven. Do not open up the oven door. In other words, the glassware needs to heat up with the oven and then cool down with the oven. Once it's completely cool, then you can, and the oven is completely cool as well, you can then open up the door and take your painted glassware out. So this paint works beautifully for painting on glassware as well. All right, I think I'm gonna go ahead and move on. I'm gonna add one more color to our palette. And this is your brown that's on your supply list. And I believe the brown you have on your supply list is um, real brown. And we're gonna move back to my pumpkin. Most of it is kind of dry. And what I did was I just rinsed my three quarter inch flat brush uh, in water just to remove that background coloring. Chris, is just real quick, ready? before yeah. you move on, because now, now, you've, now you've gotten all kinds of questions started. Okay, okay great. so what, what, what was the temperature again? 350 on the oven, but you start with a cool oven. You start with a cool oven. Do not preheat your oven. Put cool it in. Cool oven, 350 degrees for 30 minutes. And then Turn the just, oven off and, and then let, let it cool it sit. all the way back down. Got right. it. Right. And you know what's a great thing to do? Another tip to share with you if you are painting wine stems for holiday gifts and you've got several wine stems done, bake them all at one time. And the good thing to do is just to put them on a cookie tray, put your, that whole cookie tray in the oven, do this process as we just explained it to you, and then completely leave it in the oven overnight. Because then you know for sure first thing in the oven or first thing in the morning, the oven is completely cool. So that's a good way to do it is to do all your baking last thing at night. Got it. Um, All right. And then someone was asking one more thing. If you, if she was painting on an antique window, so it has wood and everything on it, you probably don't want to be putting that in the oven. So how would you seal the paint there? Just probably um, just let it dry, fully cure, I right? I would. I would just let it dry. Yeah. I, I don't think there's any way that you'd be able to, um, unless you were removing those panes of glass to, to be able to cure them by baking. The one thing that we do when we say bake to cure, like and that's the instructions I just gave you, that's so that you can then use that wine stem with a beverage. You can then hand wash it, or you can even top shelf dishwasher, safe wash your glassware. Um, however, I will tell you as an artist, I always tell people if it's handmade, hand wash. Only because even though we tell you, you can top shelf dishwasher safe yours, I always just say if it's handmade, hand wash. Um, and so I don't think a window, back to the window question, I don't think you'd be hand washing a window or using it uh, with a beverage or anything like that. So I think you'd be okay just to let that window uh, completely dry. And because your chances are you're using it for decorative purposes only, I would think. Um, you're not probably going to be serving um, a meal off of it. <laughs> okay. So now that we gave people a little minute to catch up, yeah. let's, let's keep going with our pumpkin. Okay. How are we doing? All right. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to uh, bring our attention back to our pumpkin. And if yours is still a little bit tacky, you can quick run a hairdryer over it, or you can just sit and watch this step, but you do want pretty much your, your, first color of the Pueblo on here and dry. Now what we're going to do, and I'm gonna bring this over so that you can see the darker shading between each of our sections here, that is going to be a double loaded brush, just like we did for our slip sock technique. We're gonna load our brush with Pueblo and the dark brown, um, which in your case on the supply list was real brown. If you don't have real brown, uh, Michael's also sells a bark brown. You'll also see a burnt umber, um, but just a nice deep brown is what we're going to look for, okay? So I'm going to load my flat brush, again, the full flat brush with the Pueblo. That was our base color, our local color of the pump, uh, pumpkin. 
I almost said pineapple, sorry about that. <laughs> and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stroke up into the puddle of our dark brown color. Um, so just add some brown on the edge of that um, loaded brush so that we, it's not quite half like we did the yellows here. It's just a little bit on the edge. So I'm gonna add more Pueblo, more brown, and then blend on the palette. And I flip my brush over. I always blend both sides of the brush to make sure that the paint is fully loaded in the brush itself. Now the side of the brush that has the dark brown in it is gonna be next to our section lines. And you may have left yourself a little sneak line like I did here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start on that one. So I'm starting at the top and I'm gonna pull it up so that maybe you can see closer. Can you see my brush is down flat near that line, but I'm not gonna just drag it down like that. I'm gonna do a little pat, pat, pat motion. So I'm going to put my brush fully down flat. And can you all see, I'm just kind of patting that color down that whole little section line. So that's what I want each of you to do on all of your sections so that we are going to add that shading color right up and next to that little line that you may have left your, your little cheat line that you may have left yourself. And just go ahead and pat that color on. Again, lift your uh, piece, turn your work so it's easier for you. And that brown is gonna help distinguish now a beginning of a separation line between all of the sections of our pumpkin. Again, the color I'm working with is Pueblo and a dark brown. You can use a burnt umber, you can use a bark brown, you can use a real brown, any brown that you have. Like I said, our pumpkin is really more a rusty pumpkin, more of a primitive color palette rather than that bright orangey yellow color. Although if you don't have this, feel free to use that bright orange to create your pumpkin. And I'm patting that color on. I hope you all are just kind of working now to pat that color on as well. Keep loading your brush as you need to. And work all the sections of your pumpkin. Keeping that brown right up next to the division line of that section. And if any of you have a little section at the bottom, don't forget that one as well in the bottom left-hand corner of your piece. This pumpkin has one, two, three, four, five sections. So it really won't take you long to put the division lines in. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of highlight to our pumpkin. So I'm not gonna clean my brush, but I will pinch the bristles be, uh, between my paper towel here so that I can remove most of that color, most of that paint. And I'm going to add another color to our palette. And the color I'm going to add right now is pure orange, which is that bright orange that some of you were using to mix your Pueblo color. A little dollop of that will do you. And I'm now going to use that same brush that I've just squeezed the excess paint out. I'm gonna load it with a little bit of Pueblo. Again, it's our base color. And I'm going to side load into that puddle of the pure orange, our lighter color. And depending upon how light you want to add your accents, you could even dip into a little bit of moon yellow on the same side of the brush that we added the pure orange. So now we're brightening it up just a little bit more. So I've got pure orange on one side of the brush. I dipped into my moon yellow and I'm blending on the palette. So I now have a little bit lighter orange on that one side. And this lightness, the highlight is gonna be on the outside or the opposite side that we just did for each of our pumpkin sections. And I'm going to, again, just kind of pat that color on as we go along the outside edge of this pumpkin. I'm gonna pull that up so you can see, let's see where am I, I'm sorry. Takes me a minute, 
there we go. Can you see now I've started a highlight up there on this outside section on the right hand side of my pumpkin? You want to do that. So go ahead now and highlight all of your sections. And again, that was with the same three quarter inch flat brush. I've got a little Pueblo in the brush. And I also have one corner or one side of the brush with some pure orange and a touch of moon yellow just to kind of add a little bit more of a highlight. We don't want this pumpkin to get too bright if you're making yours primitive like mine. It's just enough to kind of lighten it up. And especially when you go this color next to that brown shading on your uh, sections, this was where it's really gonna pull up the color. You're gonna see a lot of lightness and a big difference between your sections of your pumpkin. And the center section of our pumpkin, you're gonna actually go around that whole kind of oval shape so that we have lightness on the edges of both sides of this center area. Again, it's my three quarter inch flat brush. It's Pueblo. It's on one side, pure orange with a little bit of moon yellow. And I'm patting that color on along the sections of the pumpkin opposite of where we painted the brown, the, where we shaded. I hope I'm, I'm speaking clearly enough that you all understand the directions. Yeah, I think we're getting it. Don't forget the bottom of this oval section. And again, the motion that we're using is just kind of a pat, pat, pat. I cannot wait to see everyone's work, John. <laughs> it's so exciting. Yep. While you all are finishing up the highlight of your pumpkins, I'm gonna go ahead and put two new colors out onto my palette because we're gonna move on to the stem of our pumpkin. And so I'm going to add um, a light green that's called citrus green. And I'm also going to add a darker green, which is thicket. If you don't have thicket, you could use a sap green. Any dark green would work for this section or this next step. Or they could even just darken up their citrus green if they had to, correct? They With could, yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. If you needed to darken it up a little bit, I would. I also have on the supply list, we don't have it out on our palette yet, the black that's gonna be our little blackbird or a little crow, I would use black to darken that green. So I'm gonna, pull up my piece onto the um, screen here close up so that you can see the stem. Can you see, I was talking earlier that it's gonna be kind of gnarly. Uh, you can see some bumps and some ridges within the stem. So what we're gonna do first is we will base coat in the entire stem from where it meets the pumpkin all the way out to that curlicue little uh, area that the bird is standing on. First, we're gonna do it all one color and we're gonna paint that all in thicket. And I'm gonna switch from using my large brush to a smaller brush now. And so I would use either a number 10 or number 12, whatever you're most comfortable with. And thicket is the darker green color. So what I'm going to do now is just paint this all in with the darker green and try and use long smooth strokes when you are base coating. And again, feel free to pick your work up and turn it towards you if it's more easier to paint rather than trying keeping it flat on the table. I'm wondering, John, if we have any beginners in our class tonight, people who possibly have never painted before. I don't know, I'm sure that we do. We have out here tonight, there's like 700. I'm sorry, 700 what? Something to be all on here. Can you believe that? That's a lot. Seven hundred. Like oh my gosh. I can't wait to see all these pumpkins. I hope you all do post them. It's a lot of folks. 
Well, while you all are painting in your STEM, let me just tell you a little bit about our Let's Paint program. I know John was going to put some details in the um, comment section if he hasn't already. We have a Facebook group. If you are into painting, I welcome you and invite you to join us. I'm one of the moderators and uh, administrators of this Facebook group. It is entitled Let's Paint with Plaid. And we have so many people who come. We offer free lessons. There's uh, all kinds of techniques that we teach. Everything is free. It's all um, recorded. We have it all stored within our Facebook group and we welcome you to come join us. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we teach free classes um, in our group and it's at noon Eastern Standard Time. And you're just gonna wanna join us if you haven't already. Absolutely. Um, yes, like, like Chris was saying, she is in the group and Andy is in the group. They go live twice every week for lunch and learn, plus all kinds of other stuff. Um, people share their paintings in there. So um, a lot of folks from the class tonight, I know are part of the group. So it is really a great place to be. Let's Paint with Plaid is the name of the Facebook group. So the I'm highlight just, colors, just... Um, just a lot of bu bunch of people keep asking. The highlight colors were pure orange and moon yellow that she put together Correct. on top of Correct. the- And I, I just saw someone ask me to hold the painting up close too. The sections of the pumpkin that were highlighted, and that would be the opposite side of where we put our brown shading. This area here is, uh, I first loaded my brush with Pueblo, then I used pure orange plus a dip of moon yellow. So it's pure and, orange dipped with moon yellow, and that's what made the highlight of my pumpkin. And then the the shadow part, Chris, the the brown was what? Yes. How did you make that? That was okay. There again, I used the same brush. It's my three quarter inch flat brush. I loaded it first with the base color, which was our pueblo. Then I side loaded into my dark brown. And right. what I used was the real brown, but I gave you a couple other brown suggestions, basically any dark brown, burnt umber, real brown, bark brown, any of those colors will work. You just there want you. to really kind of deepen in the shadows or the crevices between these sections of the pumpkin. Uh, someone's asked me about washing my brush. I haven't yet. Um, I do, well, wait a minute, that's not true. I did in the very beginning uh, when I cleaned out the Pueblo before I loaded up to do our background. But um, I, I do clean my brush from time to time. I just haven't done a lot of it yet tonight. And why not? <laughs> That's a good question, Luke. <laughs> uh, only because I just keep moving between the similar color palettes and my painting itself is very cohesive. Uh, it's a lot of the same color palette carried, covered and carried throughout. Well, the colors in our pumpkin are the same colors within our background. So it's very cohesive and I'm using basically the same color palette within my brush. So you don't really need to have to completely get your brush wet uh, all the time. So I hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think, do we have people who have our stems now painted? I'm gonna move on if we do. So we have the stem based in with using a smaller flat brush with the dark green color. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna show you up close on the finished one here. If I can get it in Zoom, there we go. Can you see that there is some darkness and then you're also gonna see some highlights. So let's add the shading or the darkness next. And so what I'm gonna do is my brush is still loaded with that um, green, the dark green, which is the thicket. And I'm going to add just a little bit of that dark brown um, to one little corner of that color of that brush. So now I'm getting a brush that's got the dark green and then it has the brown in it too. So we're doing a lot of double loading or side loading tonight. And so now I have the dark brown. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the shadows here where the stem meets the body of the pumpkin. So we're gonna darken in around all of these little, um, little scalloped edges of our pumpkin at the base there. So the area of my brush that has the brown in it, I'm going to just simply kind of pat. Again, I'm not pulling a straight 
stroke, I am patting that brown on to where it's next to the pumpkin uh, skin. I almost said pumpkin flesh, that would be the inside. So we're just gonna darken that base where the stem meets the pumpkin. And while we're doing that, I'm just going to come along and here miss along the stem, add some brown, and I'm going to allow my brush to come a little bit out of line, if you will, because I want that stem to be, like I've said a couple of times, kind of gnarly. We want it to be, uh, have some texture, if you will. So I'm gonna show you mine up close if you care to look. I've deepened the base again, where the stem meets my pumpkin. And then just following along here, just kind of making it almost kind of like little bumpy and gnarly. Added a little bit of that brown um, with my thicket loaded brush on the, what I'm thinking of is the bottom of each little section there. I didn't put it on the, if you're looking at your um, vine of the stem here, to the bottom of it, not to the top of it. All right. So several people have been asking about your palette paper. That's a particularly large pad that she has, but it comes in different sizes and it comes in a pad and you can buy it at Michael's. And it's sort yes. of like wax paper, basically. It's just a glossy sheet that you can uh, mix your paint on and then you just crinkle it up and throw it away. There's no washing or having to deal with, uh, you know, cleanup. So it's super That's handy. That's right. Yeah. That's right. All right, so the next step, I, I noticed our time, I need to keep moving on. Where the pumpkin sections meet the stem, like where this little loop is right here, I'm going to hold my brush. I reloaded it so that I now added a little bit more of the brown paint in. I've got real brown in my brush along with the thicket. I'm gonna hold my brush straight up and down. And I'm sorry, my hand might be in the way. I'll turn it sideways so you can see this way. I'm going to start with the dark color next to the brown there and then just kind of twirl it up into the stem. So I'll do that again in the next section here, but you'll do yours straight up and down, okay? But I'm doing mine at an angle so that you can see it. I've touched my brown down and I'm pulling it up into the stem so that you're creating the darkness within each little section here of the stem. So from each line, you're gonna do a dark line up. All right, I hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then once we get that shading on that stem, what do you think we're gonna do? Yes, you're right. We're gonna come back with some highlighting. The highlighting is the lighter green that we put on, on our palette, which is that citrus green. And what I did was I just took my brush, squeezed out the excess moisture onto my paper towel. So I basically removed that loaded brush so that now I just kind of side loaded into our bright green. And with that bright green, we're now going to highlight the top side of our stem. And again, kind of make it kind of naughty. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna to touch down on our pumpkin stem and kind of pull up in. That thicket might still be a little bit tacky and that's perfectly fine because you don't want it bright, bright green. You want it to kind of blend in. I'm cleaning my brush for those that are wondering why haven't I cleaned my brush now? I'm getting the green out of my brush because I'm gonna use this same brush to paint my little bird. The bird is based in solid black or licorice. If you don't have licorice, pure black would work. And, and what was you, the if you need, you're using, Chris, a number 10? It was a number 10, yes. Got it. And I was just gonna say, John, if that seems like too big of a brush for you for your little bird, feel free to use a different size, smaller flat brush. But I tend to work with as large a brush as I can for the area because you get to, not necessarily that painting faster is a thing, but you, it just helps you cover the job quicker. Andy often says, why do we send a, a boy to do a man's job? <laughs> That's kind of the concept here. 
you want to get your surface covered um, in a reasonable amount of time. So use a large brush for the area that you're going to work with. And our little bird almost kind of looks like a, oh, a little polywog, if you will, with the tail. He's very primitive. He's not very fancy. And he is just painted solid black. There's no detail to him at all. Our little crow doesn't even have an eye. If you want to put a little eye in him, you're more than welcome to uh, pick up your brush and paint a little eye. I would just add a little bit of white, which is not on our palette tonight, but I'd add a little bit of white to the black to kind of make like a gray and give him a little eye. The beak is painted solid also, and the beak is with our lightest yellow, that's the moon yellow. And you can switch and use your liner brush if you want to, if they find that easier, just to paint in the yellow beak. And the, I also then with that liner brush cleaned out my yellow, and I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of the black, which is licorice on my part or pure black if you have that. And we wanna give our bird some little uh, legs to stand on. So there's one leg that kind of comes down this way, one leg that comes down that way. And the little feet of his uh, connecting his leg to the, <coughs> excuse me, the pumpkin stem really don't show. So you don't have to worry about trying to give him claws or anything. One more thing I'm gonna do with my liner brush after I paint the bird's so let me back up for a minute with the, you're still painting along. It's the licorice of his body. It's just painted solid, color book painted in. The beak is also solid or color book painted in and that's the moon yellow. Then I took my liner brush and cleaned it out and I now loaded it with licorice again so that I could give him his legs. The next thing I'm gonna do with that liner brush and I did clean out the black first I'm gonna go back and give a little curlicue or a trendle, a, a tendril, I should say, on the stem itself. And so I'm going to dip that brush in some water. And can you see the beads of water here on my paper palette? I'm gonna now add a little bit of the darker green paint to it. And as I, the water is mixing with the paint, it's thinning it down to a much, much thinner, more fluid consistency. I might add just a little bit of black to deepen it up a little bit. And what I'm going to do, if you, I'm gonna hold my sample up one more time if you wanna look at it. Can you see, and it's also on your pattern too, that little uh, vine or a little spin off of the stem, little tendril is simply done with your liner brush and you're gonna hold that brush straight up and down. And then you're gonna let your arm kind of move with some little circular moves first. Use the pattern if you want to, or just kind of do your own little freehand thing. Let little circles, let, just kind of let it scroll out. And then once you have that, you can then quickly pick up a little bit of that lighter green. Because again, I'm gonna show you real close. It's not all one value green. There's some lighter areas and darker areas. And so I'm just gonna kind of retrace that step, skipping hit or miss with the lighter value green, which is the citrus green. And the next thing I'm gonna show you all to do, if you choose to add the checkerboard at the bottom here, we're going to use a flat brush that's almost the same size of the checkerboard itself. And that would be like a number 12 flat going back to one of the brushes that are on your supply list. If you've transferred your checkerboard and you can now see through it, I can still see mine. Let me see if I pulled it up. If you can see, can you see, oops, sorry, I'm out of focus. There we go. Yeah. Can you see, I can still see my uh, checkerboard in there. So, which is great. So now your checkerboard can be any color you want. Um, I chose to do it the dark brown. So I'm gonna use that number 12 flat and I'm just gonna moisten it first, blot it on my paper towel. And then I'm gonna just stroke up into the dark brown, which in this case, again, is the real brown. And every other square is your checkerboard. So you can choose which one you wanna start with, but I just start at the top and I touch, pull it down. If you're not sure 
You can even go sideways because our square should be about the same size. So just fill in every other square with your checkerboard. And this, because it is a primitive style pumpkin, your checkers don't have to be exactly square. If you get a little sloppy or a little messy or you're a little shaky handed, I think sometimes that's even better when it's a primitive painting. So again, you can go sideways or uh, this one's just a little portion of what I'm trying to work on or straight up and down. There are two rows to this checkerboard. So if you want, you can fill in another row right underneath it. And you can even, if as you're stroking on that one closest to your canvas edge, go ahead and let that brush just go right off the edge because it's this brown color that we're gonna do our next step of finishing up the outside edge of our canvas. I hope y'all are having lots of fun tonight. I think, I think everyone, even though it's still summer, I think everyone is so in the mood for pumpkin spice everything, aren't y'all? <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone is having a great time with it. So yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's just straight brown, I think you used, right, yes. Chris? Um, yeah, this yeah. is the one time I used the color uh, straight, along with the bird was straight and uh, his little beak was straight. I did not do anything extra to that. And the last step, oh, love me some Chris Williams. I just saw that. I looked up at the right time. Thank you, Val. <laughs> <laughs> I hope y'all are having a great time. I know I sure am. And I thank uh, you all for taking this time to be with me this evening. And I thank Michaels for this opportunity. Many of you know me. I have been, like John said earlier, and I did at the beginning of the class, been a teacher for many, many, many years. And it's just always a joy for me to be able to share the talents that I have um, with everyone. And hopefully you all have learned a little thing or two tonight as well. All right, real quickly, once we finish up our checkerboard, which is just a couple simple strokes, I wanna tell you that the last thing we do is we're gonna clean up this messy edge that we have all the way around our uh, canvas here. You can see mine is the brown, it's just solid brown. So we're gonna paint that solid and I'm only gonna paint one side tonight because I wanna teach you, can you all see, I'm bringing it up close. I want you all to look at this edge here on the top. Can you see it looks kind of messy or like a deckel edge, like torn paper? That's what we're going to do as our very last step. So let's go ahead and get the brown on the outside edge of one side and I'll use that to demonstrate with and I'll show you how to create that painted deckle edge on the top because to me that just adds a little bit more to the primitive look of this design. So we're going to paint the edge <clears throat> and I'm just using that same number 12 flat brush. I'm coming up as close to the front of the canvas as I can. And I'm gonna make that nice and smooth, okay. All right, now what I'm doing is I'm loading, I'm gonna show you how to do that kind of painted deco edge. Um, I'm gonna hold it down so maybe you can see better. I've loaded my brush good and full of lots of this brown. Can you, I don't know if you can see, can you see how thick that paint is on the brush? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hold that loaded brush right along the edge here and I'm just gonna tap, 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 tap along. Can you see how it's leaving paint hit or miss here and there as a, oh, I don't know, just kind of a sloppy finish almost, but it gives you that painted deckled edge uh, on your canvas. And if you need to reload your brush or flip the brush over to the other side, because you remember you've loaded both sides of that brush. And I just think when you're doing something primitive, it just adds another little element of surprise and texture to your surface. I hope you all like that because it's really a fun, easy thing to do. I'm gonna share with you one more time our finished sample. Can you all see, oops, let me, I'm maybe getting too close. Am I okay, John? Yeah, there you go, we can see it. There we go. So I just want you all to give that a try, if you will because that's the last step to our pumpkin to crow about tonight. 
Um, do we have any last minute questions? Well, the last step would be to sign it, right? Isn't that what Andy always oh, makes people do? Oh my goodness, you know, yes, don't yes. Let them and I did get away I did without sign doing mine. That. I signed mine right here going up the side. I tend to sign mine my full name, which is Chris Meyer Williams, and I tend to paint mine on. Uh, I know Andy often will use a pen or a pencil and sign, sign his like he's writing his name, but I always use a paintbrush and a liner brush and I paint my name on. And so that's where I did mine right there. I will tell you doing your line work with your, whether you're signing your name or you doing this little curlicue uh, tendril, you want to always make sure that you thin the paint well with a little bit of water before you, um, just go in and start loading your brush and painting. So there you, was one good question, Chris, at the end. Did you okay. do the little, did you do the edge technique on all four sides or did you not do yes. it on the left where the yes. pumpkin No, is? I'm sorry. For time's sake tonight, I was just demonstrating one side, but it's on all sides, even the bottom, every, all four sides are done. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It looks Thank so maybe you. a little sorry, less I'm on the pumpkin you. side, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It is on the pumpkin side. If I can bring it up closer, yeah. not as much maybe, but it is on the pumpkin side as well. Good, 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 good. And I so, think just for time's sake tonight, I just shortened it and demonstrated just the one side here. For sure. So like um, everyone is um, super excited about um, the class. Um, they, they Everyone's had a lot of fun and everyone's saying how fun it was to be with you tonight, Chris. So that's great. If you want to see more of Chris and uh, like I said, go to the uh, the Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group because she's a regular there and you'll have the opportunity to learn from her some more. Um, hey, did we remember to bring let next week's painting? Um, I did. I okay. did. And I'm glad to share with that. First of all, let me just say thank you so much for doing a pumpkin to crow about with me. And thank you for inviting me into your homes and your kitchen tables this evening. I've had a really good time and I hope you all have too. And next, and it's not, I'm sorry, it's not next Monday night. The next Monday night that oh, Plaid will be teaching. Because, because we are there's all a holiday Memorial coming Day. up. Yes, right. Not Memorial Labor Day, John. Labor Day, Labor Day. Labor we don't Day. want to go back to May. We can't do that. <laughs> Labor Day, everyone, on Monday. Yeah, because be the next Monday night is over a holiday weekend. We are not going to be teaching that. And I don't think Michaels is having any classes that uh, weekend or that day. We will be teaching Monday the 13th. And it will be again 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this project called Sunflower will be the class, I'm sorry, the class project. It's going to be taught by Andy Jones. And it's going to be taught using the Folk Art Pure Artist Pigments paints different from the paints I use tonight uh, as the multi-surface paints. So, but another plaid product, another folk art product. So these were the two, one tonight and the next one coming up. Okay, well, thank you everybody. We really enjoyed having you and um, check out the replay of this class on Michael's YouTube channel starting tomorrow or on their website starting the day after that. And you can go back and paint if you were not able to do that. And one last call, um, please use the hashtags so that we can all see these paintings. Um, let's paint with, uh, let's sorry, hashtag plaid crafts. Uh, let's paint challenge, um, make it with Michaels. Here we are. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jimena has just put the, uh, so oh, get a, a quick look at those uh, hashtags, okay? Good. Thank good. you everybody. We'll see you Thank next you. week or two weeks.